Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A week or so ago, I did a video on luminosity masking, and in that video, I demonstrated how you could select the highlights in an image or select the shadows in an image. After that video posted, someone asked me, is there a way you could select the midtones in an image? And I mentioned to them, yes, there is. And in a week or so, I'll do a video and demonstrate how you could select the midtones in an image. Well, that's what we're going to be doing today. And by the way, if you haven't seen that other video that I'm talking about, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. Now, we're going to start out with some gray bars. Obviously, the midtones would be the middle gray bar. I want to select the midtones. Now, obviously, for this specific image, I could go over and grab one of these selection tools, like the quick selection tool, and select it that way. But more often, you're dealing with a complex image, and the midtones aren't right here in the middle of the image. They're dispersed throughout the image, and you need to select them. To do that, go up to Select, and then down to Color Range. When you open up Color Range, you'll see there's a drop down here. Go to this drop down, and you could see you could select the highlights, the shadows, or the midtone. We're going to go right to the midtones. Click on that. Now you'll see it has a kind of, I guess, a selection. What does this mean? Well, wherever is absolute white, that is 100% selected. Wherever there's absolute black, that's not selected at all. And then you'll see there's varying shades of gray. That means that's varying grades of being selected. It's not 100% selected, but it's not 100% not selected either. But you can control this. You could narrow down your selection or you could broaden your selection. Right now I want to narrow it down. I just want that middle gray bar selected. So I would go to this fuzziness slider and I could try moving this. Let's see if we move it to left. Oh, look at that. Now we have the middle bar 100% selected, and then everything else isn't selected at all. And over here, we could see the original image if I click right here, original image. So you could see that this is the original image. We had five gray bars. Well, we had one white bar, one black bar, and then we had three gray bars. The bar right in the middle is what I wanted selected, and I was able to do it. All right, so that's how this tool works. And by the way, you know, I mentioned you could select highlight and shadows as well, and you can move this fuzziness slider around to affect that either way as well. All right, how do we use this in a real world situation? Well, let's go to this image. This is a rather odd image I took of the Korean War Memorial in Washington, DC, and it's got some midtones in it, and I wanna select the midtones. So what I could do is I would go up again to select, then down to color range, and I would go to this drop down and go to midtones. And wherever white is, that is 100% selected. And wherever black is, that's not selected at all. And I can move this fuzziness slider. If I move it to the left, I'm narrowing down the selection. Let's see, if I move it to the right, I'm broadening the selection. So I'm selecting more than just the midtone. So let's just leave it here for the sake of this argument. And I have a selection. And when I click OK, you'll have marching ants. Now I could do what I did in that video I talked about at the top of this video that I did last week on luminosity masking. I could, let, you know, just grab, let's say, brightness contrast, and you can see that when I move it, it's just affecting those tones because it automatically has a mask, and because there was a selection there, the mask then reflects what that selection is and will let the adjustments only affect that which is selected. Let me do this again so maybe I could better. Uh, show you. Let's do this again. We'll go up to select, down to color range. We'll go to midtones, but let me just narrow it way down like this because it was a little weird. So let's narrow it down. We have this selection. I could go to brightness contrast, and you can see now it's just affecting those midtones. Now, what would I, why would I want to do something like this? Well, maybe I'd like to sharpen the statues. And I don't really want to sharpen other sculptures, if you want to call them that. And I don't want to sharpen anything else. I just want to sharpen the midtones, basically. Well, the way I would go about doing it is I would duplicate the background layer by hitting Command or Control J. Then I would go up to Select, down to Color Range. I would get my selection. I'd move this fuzziness slider. And you can see in the range here, you have the range. And see how it's in the midtones? All right. So let's go with uh, maybe that, OK? And then we'll click OK. 
Now we have a selection and I want to sharpen it. Now there isn't an adjustment layer, which I used in the other video to do something. And there, you know, I used so far in this video, there isn't an adjustment layer to sharpen. So I need to use a filter. Well, before you apply the filter, you should apply a mask. So whatever is selected when you apply a mask will stay. So I'm going to apply the mask. Now it doesn't look like anything's changed, but we do have basically this top layer masked so that anything I do to that top layer will only affect the midtones. So I'm clicked on that layer now. I, I was on the mask. We'll click right on the layer and let's go up to filter, um, sharpen. Let's go to smart sharpen. Okay, so we have sharpen. Let me just make it look crazy so you could see it. Let it kick in. Okay, you see how it's mainly just affecting those midtones. So this might be a real world situation where you may want to use sharpening, but you just want to sharpen those statues and you don't want to sharpen anything else. And that's the way you would go about doing it. Now let's go to Gaussian Blur. Sharpen it like that. Yep. All right, click OK. So that's how you could make a selection of midtones. And again, in that tool, let's go back up to it, that color range tool. Um, you could also select the highlights and shadows as well. So, and you could see you could select skin tones. Um, you could select specific colors. So this is really a very handy selection tool in Photoshop that I think doesn't get talked about enough. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.